All right, I'm doing a sound check tonight, uh, seven minutes before the show starts, actually 7.51 if you want to be exact, uh, before the show starts, so doing my uh, uh, my little sound check here for you folks, so uh, either give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down for volume, um, there's the counter right there, so you've got seven minutes and 32 seconds to make yourself a cup of coffee. And hopefully it's 49th Parallel or Espresso Shot Roast from the Cottage Coffee House tonight. And uh, when you come on the show, uh, make sure you have a drink in your hand because I want to know what's in your cup tonight. So, And uh, I'm not telling you what I'm having, but I've got my beverage right here. So we have a... Um, I'll wait till the five uh, five minute mark because that's when I officially start the show. I just wanted to make sure everything was online tonight. I had some uh, last minute change ups here, so I've done that, and um, yeah, everything is cool. Everything is cool. So who's excited for the sound check? It's going to be uh it's gonna be the sound check of all sound checks. And um if you're just tuning in, this is really not the show. It's uh it's my sound check, but I just decided to feed in my um my my face today as well. So here is my happy face right here, my happy Christmas face. I'll give you a hint to what I'm drinking. I don't know if you can see the hint there or not. Maybe you can. Maybe you cannot. Who knows? Okay, so uh, sound check. We've added in a, um, a guest for the sound check to give us a sound check. And uh, <laughs> interesting. So we just got to... My friend requires um, some power. So we're going to... Uh, he's a little bit on the old side, so we're going to... Gonna put this uh, battery in them, and uh, this lad does not have a name yet, so we're looking for a name tonight in the in tonight's show. If you could uh, help me name this guy, um, it's uh, this guy right here. So without further ado, uh, it is five minutes to the show. So here we go. <laughs> There you go. Uh, I got to take the battery out of this guy. Uh, he does a second song, too. <laughs> That'll do it for uh, unnamed. He does not have a name. Uh, so we are looking for a name for him tonight during the show. If you've got any recommendations, uh, you know, I, and I don't want to call him Krusty. That's too obvious. Um, but uh, yeah, if you've got a name for him, let us know. And uh haven't heard from anybody, so I'm just wondering how my sound is tonight. Uh, if everything is cool. Um, I'm hoping... Uh, 
my guest is here with me tonight. I see him all in the background there. He's got a he's got a beverage with him, and uh, uh, all right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna skip out of the scene and just add my guest here. All right, guest, fear not. You are all good. I've got you set up. I know I'm ignoring you a little bit, uh, but we've got about a minute and 30 seconds to go. And then quick intro, and then we're right into the show tonight. Um, I guess uh, I guess the question is, uh, as you're sitting there, uh, is my audio okay, sir? And uh, can I hear from you? Yes, you can. I hope. Yeah, your audio is coming in clear. Wonder if anybody can guess who tonight's guest is just based on his voice. <laughs> the dulcet tones. <laughs> Give them a hint. Oh, hint. I don't know. What's a good hint, John? <laughs> I don't know, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> it's like an old Simpsons. The guest tonight is Paul M. No, wait, that's too obvious. It's P. Miller. <laughs> that's right. All right, are we just going to ball you down, or are we going to get ready to start the show here, Paul? And I think we'll run our intro uh, 30 seconds early. You're listening to Espresso Shots Live. Tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. for your digital caffeine. It's a little too on the nose if you ask me. I mean, no, no, it's going to be fine did, and you so. look fabulous. Okay. okay, here we go and action. <sighs> Espresso Shots. My name is John, and in tonight's episode of Espresso Shots Live, we're going to talk a little bit about Christmas. We are on the doorstep of December 1st. Uh, we are right here. And it seems like, honestly, it seems like only not so long ago we were putting up the tree and celebrating Christmas and celebrating New Year's uh, in 2019, and then somebody hit the pause button. And everything just seemed to stop, go into slow motion, if you will, almost like a one of those kind of scenes, you know what I mean? Um, 
Not to say that the last 10 months has gone by slowly, it's relatively gone by pretty quickly, which is surprising. So here we are, ready to kind of decorate the house, bring out the tree, bring out all the decorations, and get ready to celebrate Christmas again. But it looks so different this year, just like every other holiday that's come and gone in the last 10 months, Thanksgiving, uh, Easter, Halloween, all of them have been different, and they've been celebrated with less people around us. And this Christmas looks the same. We won't be having these large gatherings, or at least in, in our experience for our family, we won't be having a large gathering of people. Um, it'll be more social media related with, with chatting online and things like that, which is kind of the new world. But it's, it's hard to get excited about Christmas. And it, the older you get, the the harder it always is to get excited about Christmas. I find as I age, I tend to have to put a bit more effort into Christmas. Um, so we go through the routines. We decorate the house. We, we set up the tree. We get out all the old decorations. And, and we get ourselves ready for a good Christmas celebration. So two weeks ago, right after Remembrance Day, we um, put up our Christmas lights on the house and lit them up right away. We thought, you might as well get things going early to get people kicked into gear here and on the weekend I brought the tree out and put the lights on and haven't decorated it yet but we're all ready to decorate and we'll probably do that in the next day or at least before the week concludes so those are the routines that we know that we have to do uh, not we have to do but we like to do we enjoy doing and then it's like okay now gift time we got to buy some gifts and we you know we want to share gifts with people um, but shopping is so much different. You can't just go out and browse around and just spend a day or two to bum around the malls or go to your favorite shops or maybe go to your favorite villages like Westport or Merrickville, the smaller communities that have these great shops. It's more difficult to do it. It's not impossible, but it's more difficult. So a lot of people tend to, to move to the online shopping. It's convenient. You can sit in your armchair, use your phone, kind of go through. But it takes away from that social human interaction that we're so used to dealing with and so used to having and enjoying it. It just makes it awkward and cumbersome um, to get all these tasks done. So how do you kind of get fired up enough to enjoy Christmas this year? Like, how do you make 2020 special? It's a tough one. Next guest uh, on Express Shots Live is going to help us out. Uh, Paul Miller, pastor for the Free Methodist Church in the village of Westport here, is going to join us. And we're going to talk about um, movies because movies are always a great way to kind of get you into that Christmas spirit. There's always um, these great directors and these uh, fantastic actors of years gone by um, have the ability to kind of tug on your heartstrings and kind of bring back some memories. So we're going to talk tonight with Paul about uh, some of his favorite Christmas movies and some of his Chris favorite Christmas scenes from those movies. Uh, and again, I encourage you, all you folks watching tonight, and thanks for watching and tuning in, um, let us know what your favorite Christmas movie is, what your favorite scene is. What What is that one particular scene that's like, yeah, that really reminds me of, of Christmas and my family and, and all of that. And, uh, for me, it's one of my You know, and it, and it becomes something special, something symbolic. Uh, it's not all about the bling bling. It's the, it, the camaraderie of getting that tree together and that whole feeling of family and friends. And... For behold, I bring you to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Linus is right. I won't let all this COVID-19 my Christmas. By Christmas. I'll take this little tree home and decorate it. And I'll show him it really will work in our play. Charlie Brown Christmas when they he decorates he brings that pathetic tree home and um, 
you know, and it, and it becomes something special, something symbolic. Uh, it's not all about the bling bling. It's the, it, the camaraderie of getting that tree together and that whole feeling of family and friends and, and all that does it for me. So anyway, without further ado, let's go grab Mr. Paul Miller and let's dive into this episode uh, Expresso Shots Christmas. Well, welcome to the show, Paul. Well, thank you very much. Is, you're looking very festive over there. I just realized it looks like my head's on fire, but I, I'm stuck with it now. <laughs> I saw you uh, when I was playing my intro, and I apologize if it was a bit too long, Paul. But uh, but I saw you kind of moving around trying to get yourself positioned in the camera, but I think it looks great, man. I love the fire behind you. <laughs> it's a little hot, but, you know... <laughs> Well, you don't we'll want to do, sin, you don't want to it. sit you don't want to singe your hair off, Paul. No, that's it, right? <laughs> so, cheers. Hey, John. Cheers, man. Cheers. I'm. Uh, I, I should let you know. I'm. I'm drinking uh, my. Where's the light here? My espresso shots, coffee. So I should be up for a while tonight. <laughs> Perfect. But uh, but yeah, hey, John. I just want to thank you for. Uh, for sharing that, man. I, I I haven't thought a lot about that scene, but I always thought it was interesting how it was such a gnarly mess of a tree. His friends all gather around and then it's just, it's this beautiful, full, lush tree. And I don't know. I just think that's kind of a beautiful symbol, you know, just, it was his, his friends that added the beauty to it. It wasn't that it was a different tree. I don't know. Just thanks for sharing that though. Hey, no, and, and I'm glad you appreciate it, and, and, and I appreciate having you on the show, Paul. I mean, you've been on my show actually a few times. You're probably one of my most popular mm -hmm. guests. Ooh, look at that. So in my cup tonight, I'm, I switched gears because the last time I chatted with you, you were drinking tea, so I thought, I'm going to have a tea, so I have a green tea tonight in my cup. Oh, there you go, Okay. Uh, I was going to buy tea today, but then I couldn't decide. So I, I got some espresso shots coffee today at the wonderful right. Cottage Coffee House in Westport, Ontario, by the way. Yes, and thank you. I love the mug as well, the Cottage Coffee mug. I want to say hi to a few people that have tuned in today. We have Cynthia, obviously, yeah. upstairs uh, watching us. We have Bob is watching us tonight. Hi, Bob. Uh, Heather from Slabtown and Frank from Slabtown, right on. Glad you guys are joining us. Uh, Fred from down Spring Street. Uh, it's always nice to have somebody on, on Spring Street watching the show. Um, so... Welcome to the show, and tell us what's in your cup tonight. What are you guys, uh, are you drinking something warm, or are you drinking something cold, or uh, tonight to me feels like a warm drink night. How about you, Paul? Yeah, totally. It, it, that kind of night. Yeah. Right on. So let's let's get into this Christmas scene. Um, let's get yeah. into these, these movies. So I'm going to hand over to you, Paul. Take it away. Uh, let's talk about your number one. What is your number one? Or you're not, you want to go you, well, five or one or? I don't know. It's up to you. What do you think? Should we uh, Letterman style work up to one? Yeah. Okay. I, I will do a, a bonus one. You know, I wouldn't be doing my professional duty if I didn't mention movies like The Nativity Story to kind of get to, to the founding heart of, of Christmas, uh, kind of a time of hope. remember this year more than any other for sure but my my first one um is actually a, it's a little uh 1940 movie that most people may not have seen before and uh, it's called the shop around the corner and uh just set it, you know it's kind of set pre-war and um jimmy stewart maureen sullivan and it is actually the story that um that they took you've got mail from and uh, it's a what happens with some of the side characters and who who lose a sense of family and then finding that um, even if you've had loss in your personal life, you can still find family and the people around you. And also a neat little love story in there. And there's a great moment actually near the end of the film where, you know, they're about to have that moment where they just admit they love each other. But then it actually feels more real to life. Jimmy Stewart's character feels like he's really like he knows it's close, but then he tries like this power flex move that totally bails. But let's we can check out uh, a clip from that. 
Yeah, and you know what, Paul? I'd never seen that movie, and thanks for bringing it to my attention. And it's 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 got so many elements going on to it. Um, yeah, it's it's obviously where the uh, you've got bail came from, and you can see that within the movie. But I love the fact that this this guy, the shop owner, and I forget his name, has like six employees, and uh, and 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 it's it's set in Budapest, which is it's a bit different to identify mm-hmm. with. But it's it's as a shop owner myself, um, it's like the grandeur of those shops back in the day were were magnificent. It was such a if you had a job like that, it was a big big deal. So I'm going to run this clip. This is kind of the trailer to the movie. And if anybody has not watched this, um, I think it was like $4.99 to buy it or rent it or something. Uh, but it's well worth the money, and you should definitely put it into your to your repertoire. A- anything you want to say before I hit this clip and hit play, Paul? I know. I, I It's just I, I'm a big fan of the black and white films, but also it's just one of those – Christmas kind of movie that's out there that may not be in your repertoire. So it might be neat to try out something that isn't just a Hallmark movie. Absolutely. So, yeah. Oh, there you are. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to introduce myself. I, uh, I am Mr. Matuchek of Matuchek and Company, the shop around the corner. <laughs> now, if you'll be kind enough to take a look at the window, you'll see that we sell some very nice things. Of course, my shop may be a little far away for some of you. It's, uh, it's in Budapest, Hungary, just around the corner from Balta Street. But I'm sure that the bargains you get here will more than make your trip worthwhile. It's, uh, it's the kind of a shop where you get a 350 value for 348. And now, with your permission, I, uh, I would like to introduce you Love to some part. of the people who work in my shop. First, I'd like you to get acquainted with my head salesman, Mr. Kralik, played by James Stewart. Yeah, I can buy two dozen of these cigarette boxes at Miklos Brothers. What do you think of it? I think it's great. Well, open it. No, Mr. Matichak, it's not for us. But you haven't listened to it. It plays O.G. Chornia. Even if it played Beethoven's Ninth Chornia. Symphony, I'd still say no. No, I, I just don't like the idea. My first sales lady is Clara Novak, played by the very charming Margaret Sullivan. She argues, too. Listen, I sold as much goods yesterday as anybody else in the shop. 95 Pango 50 isn't bad for a rainy Monday three weeks before Christmas. Did you tell that to Mr. Matichak? Yes, I did. And what did he say? He said, tell her not to come in that blouse anymore. Tell him I won't. I will. Now, I want you to take a look at Mr. Perovich, played by Felix Bressard. He, uh, he was one of the Russian comrades in Ninochka. He's the typical sales clerk, who is always ten minutes early. Perovich, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? No, no, go ahead. Well, it's very confidential. Yeah, sure. Well, I suppose a fellow like me wants to get married. Well, that's wonderful. That's the best thing that could happen to you. Who's the girl? Oh, wait a minute. What did I say? I said, suppose. I said, a fellow like me, I did say me. Now, look, how much does it cost you to live? Like you and Mrs. Pirovich are leaving out the children. Oh, why fool yourself? And now, I have a real <laughs> treat for you. You are to meet the Bobrovo like of the shop. Mr. Vada, yeah. played by Joseph Schilkraut. Everybody wonders where he gets the money to dress so elegantly. He certainly can't do it on the salary yeah. he gets this from is, me. <clears throat> this would be the spoil, spoiler no alert right there. <laughs> without an errand boy. Oh, Meet yeah. Pep- They're all of a child. No, you don't have to stay. You yeah. mean it? I'll straighten it out with Mr. Matichek. Thanks, Mr. Craddock. So now you go to Thanks, see your Mr. girlfriend. Craddock. By the way, is it serious? Yes, very. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll both be engaged Monday. I think we will. Uh, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I just said in my case, it might happen. Well, as a matter of fact, I can tell you it will happen. Ah, uh, <laughs> I thought you were a customer. <laughs> I should have known better. <laughs> However, every disappointment has its bright side. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Ernst Lubitsch, our director. <laughs> The man who gave you a garbo in Ninochka who made you laugh and who now gives you a morgue. Let's leave it right there, Paul. Um, those are all the yeah. characters in, the, in that movie. And, uh, yeah, it's a great film. Yeah, it's a charming little story. I, I just, uh, 
I, I think people in the dialogue and, the, and and Margaret Sullivan and Jimmy Stewart back and forth is just they 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 build a great tension to to each other. It's pretty great. Penny Griffin tuned in. She's apologizing for being late tonight to the show, but I, I think we'll let her off. Paul, what do you think? I I think we can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so where are we going now? Yeah, we're going to go to number four here, and you know, keeping on this you know classic theme of you know deep romance and and tied in with Christmas. Um, I can't help but think of the movie Elf, you know, and uh, um, it's just it's amazing how these box office bombs like It's a Wonderful Life and Elf and things like that just find a new life somehow and uh, around Christmas. And so I know I, 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 there are so many moments in that movie that are just great. And I love the interaction between uh, Buddy the Elf and or Santa Claus. That's just an amazing moment. And uh, uh, if you happen to only like old movies, this is just a really sweethearted kind of uh, take on Christmas. And uh, I don't know, I, it's definitely part of our yearly tradition. I don't know if you guys watch it. Yeah, I can, I can see you sitting there on the couch with your bowl of popcorn and, you know, eating it away and the kids kind of laughing. And uh, yeah, that is a classic movie oh, yeah. for sure. Uh, probably one of Will Ferrell's better movies, actually. Um, I like him in certain so. things. Uh, sometimes he's a little bit tight cast, but uh, Elf is a, is a great movie, and it's one that we typically watch as well. So, anybody else out there like that movie? Yeah. Nobody's staying. I would hope so. I would hope so. <laughs> All right, so I didn't bother bring it, pulling a clip of that up. Um, I think everybody has seen that movie, so I'm not going to play that one to, yeah. to death. Uh, where, let's go number three. Yeah, number three is, um, uh, you know, it, it's not really in order here because all of them have their own. But but uh, to me, the only Christmas Carol movie that really counts is the, uh, the 1951 uh, Alistair Sim uh, Christmas Carol. Uh, there's always something amazing when in a time of color film, people choose to make a film in black and white. And this is one of the great films that really make use of black and white. Never watch the colorized version because it's actually shot for black and white. And uh, when he wakes up on Christmas Day, it is just, it, it is the best kind of that morning transformation and change that uh, it's just, it's just a really delightful. And Alistair Sim plays it so well. And if you watch the course of the movie, it starts... In his office, it is like a dungeon. It's deep and it's dark and it, it ends, and I don't think in this clip, but it ends with him like on the brightly lit, in the, the second floor window, just looking out on a bright world. And it's just this, this arc of light and shadow that just gets brighter and brighter as the movie goes on. So yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely uh, watch this one. Well, and I'm sure most people have. We'll, we'll run a quick clip, but you're right. It, it ends, well, you watch, watch the clip. <laughs> Tell me, what day is it? What day? What's well, Christmas Day, Costa? Christmas Day, Christmas Day, Christmas Day. Then I haven't missed it. <laughs> the spirits must have done everything in one night. <laughs> of course, they can do anything, can't they? Of course they can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I don't think so. I hope not. What? <laughs> the curtains are still here. They're still here. You didn't, you didn't tear them down and sell them. Hmm? They're, they're here now. Everything's here. I'm here. <laughs> I, 
and the shadows of things that would be can still be dispelled. And they will be. I know they will be. I know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm as light as a feather. <laughs> I'm as happy as a, I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. <laughs> I'm as giddy. I'm as giddy as a drunken man. I, I never... <laughs> a Merry Christmas, Ebenezer. <laughs> you old humbug. <laughs> and a Happy New Year, <laughs> as if you deserve. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, that's, that's a great scene. That's Isn't a that such scene. a great, great line? The shadow of things that would be can be dispelled. Like, I'm just like, I heard that. I'm like, man, I need to hear that this year, you know? Everything just seems shadowy and dark, and we don't know what's going to happen. It's like that can be dispelled. Just it's making those little changes, right? So yeah, yeah, uh, that's a great one. Right uh, on. We can jump to number two. You want to jump? All right. You want to jump uh, to number this, two? Well, we don't have to. Hey, hey, before we jump to number two, did you see my intro yeah. with my sound check guy? Uh, yes, I did. Absolutely. Did Did you like the lobster? <laughs> I did. I did. It was, um, again, you're blaming the batteries. He sings a little off key. He kind of really <laughs> goes in and out of key there. It sounds like, he sounds like me when it's singing. It's perfect. <laughs> but we need, but we needed the name for the lobster. So somebody recommended, uh, Bob recommended, what did he say here? Polly. Polly. Wow. Um, what do you think? Polly? If it's a reference to me, he may sing better than I do. Um, <laughs> no, it's P-O-L-L-Y. <laughs> oh, really? Polly the Lobster. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm thinking like Tony, just because he's tone deaf. But Tony. You know. Hey, I'm Tony. I'm Tony the Lobster, man. It's like a real tough lobster, eh? <laughs> Tony. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Hey, what's up? What's going on, eh? It's like, eh. Just hanging Merry out Christmas. The, I was just hanging at the bottom of the ocean, man. Yeah. Um, what do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, let's go to number three, Paul. Uh, yeah, number two. Or yeah, number yeah, two. This, this movie, yeah. It is actually a little dark in places, for sure. And it's an odd Bill Murray movie, but it's the movie Scrooged. So I guess on the Christmas Carol theme, it's definitely a... I won't say a modern take anymore because it's, you know, one of the gifts is a hi-fi VCR. But uh, <laughs> I think uh, it's, it's the thing that always always did it for me with this movie is his final speech on air. It's his Christmas morning Scrooge moment, but it's it's live on air for the world to see. And uh, I don't know, I just, you know, I, I actually find, I always found it really stirring that that sense of, you know, if you feel like you need a miracle kind of thing. Um, and so I just figured, I find that speech is just, it's just one of the most stirring kind of Christmas speeches that's out there. Yeah. You know what I, what I like about it is Bill Murray is kind of a dark uh, type character. And, um, and it's almost like he's having to scream it out in this speech because he's, He's, he believes it so much, right? And he gets right into character. Yeah. And he's, he's wild when he yeah. does it. And it's almost like you never want to get sad over Bill Murray because he's not that type of guy. I always see him in Stripes or, or Groundhog Day or I see him in those rules. But to see him kind of giving his speech is awesome. So let's, let's roll this clip uh, if anybody's not seen it. On the new VCR. Because it's Christmas Eve, I'm telling you. I'm not crazy. It's Christmas Eve. It's it's the one night of the year when we all act a little nicer. We 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 smile a little easier. We 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 we, we share a little more for a couple of hours out of people that we always hoped we would be. It's a miracle. It's really a sort of a miracle because it happens every Christmas Eve. And if you waste that miracle. You're going to burn for it. I know what I'm talking about. You have to do something. You have to take a chance. You, you do have to get involved. There are people that are having, having trouble making their miracle happen. There are people that don't have enough to eat. That, there are people that are cold. 
you can go out and say hello to these people. You can take an old blanket out of the closet and say, here, you can make them a sandwich and say, oh, by the way, here. I get it now. <laughs> and if you, if you give, then, then it can happen. Then the miracle can happen to you. It's not just the poor and the hungry. It's, it's everybody who's got to have this miracle. And it can happen tonight for all of you. If you believe in this spirit thing, you, you the miracle will happen, and then you'll want it to happen again tomorrow. You won't be one of these bastards who says Christmas is once a year and it's a fraud. It's not. It can happen every day. You've just got to want that feeling. And if you like it and you want it, you'll get greedy for it. You'll want it every day of your life, and it can happen to you. Now, I believe it's going to happen to me now. I'm ready for it. And uh, it's great. It's a good feeling. It's it's really better than I felt in a long time. I I I'm ready. Have a merry Christmas, everybody. Did I forget something, big man? God bless us, everyone. We'll leave it right there. I'm gonna. We'll leave it right there. Um, so Facebook doesn't say, "Hey, that's not you're all on the right side of that song." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I just I love that sense that I think the more that we give, we actually do get greedy for that feeling of being the miracle. You know, and uh, and there's something that it builds up in us being being generous, and uh, maybe this is where we that desire to, to be generous is actually bigger because we know people around us are hurting. Sometimes we can go so wrapped up in all our own stuff. And, uh, ah, I, I just, I love that line, that idea of being greedy for, for bringing miracle into people's lives. I think is really cool. Yeah. 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 And it's always better to give than receive. I mean, it's nice to receive, but it's great to give, right? Well, it's funny. Cause like with, with my, my guys, like, so often it's like you build the Christmas list and it's then it's like, where do you find this stuff? And, and to shift that around this year and even last Friday when we were doing the shop around town to take them around to get gifts for their mom and, and in the local shops. But then it's like, you know, look around and, and what do you want that's here? Right. And to build that by, you know, even just locally and, and to just do it that way and to see the things in our friends stores and shops and that, that, it's like, oh, that's really neat. Oh, I would love that, right? And instead of, you know, Amazoning everything. And, uh, but just to, to have that moment to share together, to walk around and find something from mom instead of just searching for it online, you know? Yeah. That, that, you know, produces something beautiful in them. This is our life now. <laughs> what we have, we need to enjoy it. it. And we're so fortunate to be here in the village of Westport. And I encourage Everybody yeah. and every business owner that maybe hasn't gotten around to getting some lights up yet. I know times are tough and it's you're trying to find time to juggle stuff. Do it. Put the lights up. Shine a little light through the village. Um, and it, it's starting to happen already. You can see some lights coming up. But the, I still see some opportunities for people out there that could their homes or maybe help out their neighbor and, and share some lights with those guys as well. So that's my plug for the and village. If you, if you got a, yeah, and if you got a business or a home and you... Uh, just get in touch with me. I've got I've got strings of lights for you, brand new. You can have them, right? And oh, uh, nice. if it'll just brighten up your street, your te your your storefront, and bring a little joy to people walking around. And uh, just let me know, and uh, well, I can hook you up. I guarantee it. I've got you covered. Paul, yeah. you're an awesome, awesome, All awesome right, guy. Number one. Let's do number one. Yeah. Let's do her. So. Yeah, and another box office bomb, but uh, become a <laughs> and uh, the the scene, you know. Usually, everybody's favorite scene is you know every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. But to me, it's it's when George is at the end of his rope and he, he's he's praying on the bridge and and uh, he want he's considering just dropping and taking his life, and 
you know, Clarence takes him through his, what his life would be like if he wasn't around. And then this moment back on the bridge where he just wants to live again. And, and it's there that, that George gets his own wings. And uh, he, he goes flying off that bridge to find his family and to find his friends. And uh, um, so Clarence isn't the only one who gets the wings. George actually gets his wings in this movie. And so I, I think John may have the clip of him uh, in that moment for us yeah. to check out. And I, I didn't grab that clip. Uh, I ran out of time, but okay. I, I, I'm going to let me walk you through it. He's running through the bridge. He ends up back at home, right? <laughs> and he's frantically going through the house, yeah. making sure that everything is still there. And he's delighted with himself that yeah. things are still the way they, they, they were. And uh, I, I couldn't grab that clip. I apologize tonight. It was, uh, it was, it was, no, no. It's ran out of time on that guy. But it, yeah, I'm sure everybody knows exactly what you talk about in that movie. Um, yeah, so those but, are five but, good ones. I would just encourage, yeah, yeah. I would just encourage watch that movie and watch for, for there's Clarence's journey of getting his wings, but watch for George's journey of, of how he gets his wings too. It's uh, it's maybe an interesting way of watching the film as well. So, good way yeah. to look at it. So, Paul, it wouldn't be fair if we only had your top five and and we didn't talk about any of my my favorites, right? So I thought, hey, I'll grab a few clips Absolutely. of my own. Um, so nice, and uh, mine maybe aren't as heartfelt as yours are, uh, are, but they are to me. But they make me laugh, make me chuckle, and and get me through the season. So I'm gonna go to. Uh, I'm definitely. Let me just pull this up here. Slide us over into here. I love here. you, man. <laughs> so this is a. Uh, you know, Jim Carrey, like him or not like him, but The Grinch is still a Christmas. Uh, I think Drew Carey does the best job in this movie. Uh, Jim, love not it. Drew. Uh, did I say Drew? <laughs> that would be funny, eh? Yeah. Drew Carey doing the... Uh, <laughs> it's a scene, folks. <laughs> okay, let me pull this up here. So this is uh, this is one that I uh, am particularly fond of. Nice. Hold on. I need some audio. Right here. Hello! Hello! How are you? How are you? How are you? I asked you first. I asked you first. first, first. Oh, that's really mature, saying exactly what I can. I'm an idiot! You're an idiot! You're an idiot. <laughs> I'll that tell you, Max. Was, I was like, it's, it's such a great scene. I, I, you know, I don't know about you, Paul, but that's from a from a comedic point of view. I guess I, I really get a chuckle out of that movie. We watch that several times every Christmas. Oh, yeah. Sometimes so in you, the summer. Yeah. So see if you can spot this movie. I'll play the scene, and you spot the movie, and and and, and name the actor. I don't. I don't know if you can get this one or not. This is a tough one. All right. This turkey tastes half as good as it looks. I think we're all in for a very big treat. (laughs) Save the neck for me, Clark. (laughs) Okay, Eddie. Why are you crying? I told you we put it in too early. Oh, it's just a little dry. It's fine. I told you. This <laughs> it's just a little dry. It's fine. <laughs> Been there. Okay, so I think that's, that's Drew Carey, and it's the <laughs> Price is Christmas. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, maybe it's just me, but I kind of really want to try that. Like, I love beef jerky. And I see them lying on that, and I'm just like, man, I love those crispy bits. That just actually kind of looks like the perfect turkey. To me. 
Well, it would be my sister's favorite turkey. My youngest sister, yeah. uh, her favorite part of the turkey is the skin. I don't even think, you think she eats the meat. She just eats yeah. the skin of the turkey. So that would be yeah. uh, that would be the one for her. Yeah, those are, oh, that's good. Those are those are a couple of scenes that that resonate with me, Paul. Um, but we have to take a quick commercial break, folks. We have to go to the weather. Happy McSunny yeah. wants to give you guys the weather. Don't run away. Don't run away, Paul. Don't run away, anybody. Uh, we're gonna come back, wrap things up um, after the weather, and uh, talk a bit more about Christmas. Hang tight, Paul. Yep. I think I'll keep us in the scene. What do you think? Should we stay sure. in the scene, Paul? All right, let's stay in the scene. Yeah, absolutely. We could talk through it too. Whoops. I guess I'll hit play here. <laughs> Good Wednesday evening. I'm Chief Meteorologist Happy McSunny, and I'm reporting to you live from the Westport and Rideau Lakes area. The weather for the next uh, little bit's not going to be too bad. It's going to hover around the freezing point. A little bit of snow on Friday, and then uh, just sun, sun, and clouds for four or five days following that. So the weather's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, tonight on John's show, he's going to be talking all things movie. And, uh, so I've got this little lantern with me. Kind of reminds me of Ebenezer Scrooge and the Christmas Carry fan. So, I also enjoy the Grinch. Uh, talking to one of Santa's helpers today, uh, she prefers, uh, some more of the cartoon classics. Like the original Grinch or the Charlie Brown's Christmas, the Elf, some movies like that so there's lots of great movies to watch uh, heading into this holiday season uh something to do on these cold nights back to you in the studio john see those chairs right there paul <laughs> yeah that's where i'd sit when it was warm <laughs> i don't know there's something about happy, happy mcsunny that seems familiar to me i don't know where i've seen that that guy before but it's yeah. almost like he's ripped off somebody's personality or something. I don't know. There's something going on. Yeah, he, he might. He must have a twin around or something. I don't know. Yeah. We appreciate all of the work that he does around here. Um, great forecasts. Yeah. Uh, I never remember them because I always say the next day, what's the weather going to be? Didn't you watch the forecast? I was like, oh, no, I was just more watching the show. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention to the forecast. Speaking of forecasts, I've just got to say, speaking of forecasts, John, I guess you got to say, I'm really worried for the people in the house out the window behind you. It's getting critical. Oh. Like <laughs> you're just right like over there. Somebody yeah. needs to help them. <laughs> yeah. The light is on, but like yeah. like like help these people out. They they're <laughs> Well I, I kinda feel like since you had the fire behind you, that's you sitting over there in that home, uh doing this show with me. <laughs> getting increasingly worried. Yeah. It's like, I wonder if I should go get some supplies. <laughs> This probably looks beautiful from the outside, but from inside, it's terrible. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. it's a, and then, you, so you got to shovel yourself out just to go get a drink of water in the in the stream there. <laughs> it's all about perspective, man. What side yeah. of the window are you on? <laughs> well, I definitely appreciate your time tonight. We spoke a little while ago, and you talked about maybe having a surprise as well for Christmas or or something. Is that still something that we're talking about, or is that still what we're not talking about? Yeah, we're, we're going to be doing um, just a small event here, and we're going to kind of trickle information out, just a kind of walk-through event for Christmas. But uh, we don't want to really broadcast it wide because people kind of local. You, you don't want crowds and throngs coming. But uh, keep an well, eye this show, out. This show is not that popular, Paul. <laughs> this show is not that popular. <laughs> ticketed event and uh so every five minutes you have a ticket for that time frame to kind of walk through and there'll be a live nativity and things like that but uh so just watch out for on, on facebook and we can share it we'll just share it kind of locally and Perfect. uh to just have something nice on december 12th to uh the big part so keep an eye out for that for sure 
Nice. Awesome. Paul, I do appreciate your time coming on the show and uh, you're a great community yeah. guy. You always got great ideas and uh, you've got a good art and it's in the right place. Um, man, love you with all, all my heart, buddy. Love you too, man. I really do. You're a good man. I'm going to close out. You're a good man. I'm going to close out with this Charlie Brown scene and then I'm going to run my yeah. credits and, uh, and that's the show. So thanks everybody for tuning tonight. Any final words, Paul, before I run this final clip? Just, hey, Merry Christmas. If you're in need, get in touch with me. Or if you'd like to help somebody in need, get in touch with me because uh, we, we can we can take care of people both ways. So uh, just, you know, yeah. If, if you need help this Christmas, reach out because there's people here who care about you. Right on. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, Charlie Christmas. Brown completely hopeless. Rat. You've been done. I'm well, gonna run that backwards. <laughs> I was doing so well. I made no mistakes. I had to make a mistake there. <laughs> There's a lot of moves on this show. There you go. There is a lot of moves. Completely hopeless. Rat. You've been dumb before, Charlie Brown, but this time you really did it. <laughs> what a treat. <laughs> I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. Who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.